that he had gotten from um I, I don't know who the fucking guy was but it was like you know one of these um brony celebrity people had sent it to him and he said it by name and then he was identifying musicians by name who were all you know sitting in one area uh hanging on his every word and like you know every time that he said someone they had like a little serious bro moment you know like a fist pump or whatever um and it was interesting because he got all the big ones oh quick tangent something i forgot from the voice actress panel um alex s is one of the more popular musician people he had a lame ass question about um is it possible that you will ever use uh, some of our work in the show it's like a don't ask the void asterisks they don't fucking know b no they're not okay anyway back to ingram um so where was i Oh, yeah. So the, the Ingram interview himself, him talking about, you know, uh, his creative process and all that, a uh, decent amount of the questions from uh, the audience and all that what was all really informative and good. I want to go over that because, you know, you can look that up yourself. Um, which brings us to the song exchange at the end, um, which was quite a sight to behold. Um, actually, some necessary setup uh, in between the two panels. Um, uh, Dark Matter was nice enough to get uh, something to drink because we hadn't you know, had anything to drink in a while. And being in a big, humid, highly inhabited room is going to add up after a while. So I was fucking thirsty as hell. Um, so he comes back and, uh, you know, gets it with, I had dr drank a Diet Coke. I kind of just chugged it down really quickly. And then I was just sort of, you know, holding on to the cup you know how you do that sometimes just not doing anything with it but just holding on to it that becomes relevant in a moment so um uh they sort of asked him i don't know if this was pre-planned or not i would presume yes but uh, it's possible no they sort of asked him to uh do like an acoustic well they asked him what song he would like to play or he enjoys playing and he said he, he enjoys playing an acoustic version of uh giggle at the ghosty so they say, like, would you like to do one for us? And um, and then he says, and, like, this is what I'm talking about with him knowing how to interact with the fandom. He said, only if the crowd will sing along, which, you know, it, it, it's like, uh, it, it's like promising a nymphomaniac free sex or something. Like, you know, they're going to say yes, and they're going to say yes in the most extreme way possible to such requests. So of course the crowd is going fucking nuts and like, yes, 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 So he goes up to get his guitar and he comes back and I swear to God, like if they timed this, they couldn't have done it better. He gets about a uh, few bars into the song, just beginning. The crowd's already hugely into it because you know, fucking bronies. And um, they start singing and then the feed goes out on cue. For, and it stays there for the entire remainder of the song. And, you know, Ingram's rocking out at this point on the acoustic. And, um, you know, he sort of, I, I think it might even have had his eyes closed for a while. Um, and it was just it was just hilarious to watch because it was so perfectly timed. And the crowd kept singing along. And every once in a while, they find out that, you know, if you're playing it acoustically, the it's going to be a bit different in terms of timing. They would find out that he was a few words ahead. Then they readjust when they get like the two seconds of the Skype feed when it actually comes back in. And it's possible that that entire thing happened without him being aware of the fact that the connection went down and nobody could tell or, or, or everybody could tell and he couldn't. So it was just great. I loved it so much. Um, and that brings me to something that wasn't great and I didn't love at all, uh, which was the at the gala gift. There's a few things to be said here. One, on some level, it does take some guts to go up there and, you know, sing something like that to the guy who wrote the song as a gift. I'll give them that. Third of all, um, and I'm, I'm sure everyone is well aware at this point, it was basically a disaster. I, I mean, like, uh, you know, uh, I'm watching it, and I, I think when it originally started with um, the person playing Fluttershy was not able to, um, 
her, her, her voice was not coming through at all. We, we could not hear a single thing in the back. And then uh, a few notes were way off. I, I mean, you, you can look this up yourself. I would not do it a service by even trying to describe it. And a, one of the best parts of it was Ingram's reaction through the whole thing, which, again, I, I, I'm, I hope this is available online somewhere that you could watch how he's reacting to people singing through this because it was this weird mixture of an awkward smile, like the type of thing you'd see in an episode of The Office when people are pretending to find Michael Scott funny or something. Um, and the, the other thing was I'm watching this and, you know, it's one thing to see it online. It's another thing to be there where you can't hit the pause button on YouTube to like let you let you bring yourself back down so you'll have the necessary mind to continue. Um, so by the time this whole thing was done, and I only sort of realized I was doing it. Um, I, I look at that cup that I had been holding in my hand, which was, you know, this little, uh, one of those called uh, plaster or something, cups, the, the type that you can squish. And it is completely squished. I, in the process of expressing my pain, it was like I was holding a stress ball or something. I completely demolished this cup. Um, I, I believe um, either Headless or Scuderia took a photo of it, which was probably appropriate. But, you know, I, if, if that is out there, that cup is probably the most succinct expression of my pain at that performance. But um, overall, though, I, I did enjoy it. I, I did the Skype as a whole. Um, that was an odd moment that could probably only exist in this fandom. Um, so yeah, that was the end of the Skype Q&A. Then it went to um, Epic Cupcake Time 2 was good, a bit self-explanatory. Um, I, 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 I thought it was fine. Um, I like the Applejack Daniels. Uh, I, I think a lot of people were kind of using this to, uh, you know, because you just gone through the episode, the voice actresses and then Ingram. So some people were sort of taking a mental breather, you know, uh, a few people were checking online and all that. Um, so I don't know if everyone was paying attention. They had like a Skype conversation with them that was, you know, no offense to the people who write it. I'm sure that they're cool, but, you know, it just, it, it didn't feel all that interesting after, you know, the stuff that they had just shown. So I paid half attention to it. Um, the, the, the person who does Pinkie Pie on that is very good. And, uh, Oh, I, I, I thought this was funny. Maybe this is just corny, but um, at, at one point they were having problems with one of their Skype connections. Surprise, surprise. And um, someone said, I keep hearing this high-pitched sound. And then the person who plays Pinky on the show, like uh, on, you know, the little webtoon, um, she, that, like that voice is basically her voice that you hear. And she goes, is it my voice? Which, uh, that horrible impersonation on my part there. But I thought that was pretty funny. Um, which brings us to the costume contest, um, which, yes, I did stay seated. I stuck around for and I watched all of it. Um, a few thoughts on that. Uh, first of all, there was the controversy surrounding the winner. Let me show, let me explain the situation as it played out as I saw it. Um, so this little girl comes up and she's dressed as Apple Bloom. Um, and, a, and a basic costume of Apple Bloom. Um, fine, but, you know, basic. Um, and she comes up, and, you know, it's she's like, I don't know, seven or something, and, you know, it's adorable and all that. So, of course, the crowd, uh, to their credit, cheers her on. And uh, then they go through everybody else. We'll get to some of the other ones in a moment. Um, so, so, okay, so now you have a little girl, which I, I, you could tell they weren't expecting this, around with, you know, the whole brony crew and the question well it's not much of a question because the answer is obvious but the question is what do you do um now they ultimately what, what they went to they had passed out uh, after the 10 minutes of deliberation on how to do the voting for this by the way which is hilarious you know this wasn't something to discuss in the meetings anyway um so they pass out little note cards and crayons we, we offered to write in pen but no they sort of demanded crayons i i, I respect that in a weird way um uh, they, they hand out the note cards to everyone, and you know the expectation is to write one, two, three, your favorite people. So once the uh, kid is up there, 
obviously the kid has to win. It's going to mean so much more to her than anyone else. I don't think there was any huge prize associated with this or anything. So, like, the kid has to win. That is basic human logic. Um, I would like to think that if they were to go to the crowd, that uh, they would come to the same conclusion about this. A, that may not be true. And... B, you don't want to risk it because... So, so what they ultimately ended up doing was, you know, we're going to decide the first place winner by, you know, the accolades of the crowd. And then they sort of went directly to the Apple Bloom girl and said, like, oh, give it up for Apple Bloom. And the crowd went nuts, to their credit. And it's like, okay, she's the winner. I was fine with this. Maybe it's a cop-out or something. But th th I think they handled the situation well. A story went out online that some presumed asshole went to the kid that the one reason that she won was because she was a kid i did not see this transpire supposedly on the live stream this obviously happened if it did i, I don't think this needs to be said but i would like to say fuck that guy like why the, why would you even like do that um but 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 i did not see it from where i was sitting so hopefully this was just either an embellished thing or a theoretical event or possibly something that was said to the live stream and not the kid directly, which is kind of still an asshole. Like, why, you know, I, I hope that we're all operating on the same basic human logic here. So why would you even need to say that? But, um, so, so yeah, that's my take on that situation. Uh, so, so then after that, so some of the costumes, I, I mean, like, you know, cosplay, LOL, and all that. And, I, and yeah, I agree. I, I was not one of them. For, I would, for like five minutes, I was convinced that I was going to tell everyone on the forum that I was um, one of the big Macintoshes, but I ultimately decided against it, and I realized that there were a few pictures taken that would probably end up in circulation. So I decided not to do that, but I totally could have, and you guys would have bought it. Fuck you guys. Um, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah, anyway, the costume. Um, my, my Now... Let me think of some of the more notable entries. There were a number of people that were, you know, showed up in a purple, like, let's say a purple shirt and a wig, and were like, I'm Twilight. You know, that's fine, but, you know, not particularly impressive. Some of the costumes, though, were downright impressive. Uh, I ended up voting for the one of the guys who played Soren and kind of humanized it, like, not, not in, like, a creepy way or anything, but just sort of made the human equivalent of the Soren suit, which... You know, say what you will about it. I thought it was pretty well done. Um, I think he was number seven, if you want to look him up. Um, some of the Big Macs were weird. One guy just... I, I had seen the, one of the people who was Big Mac during the event with the, uh, you, you know, the neck thing. It's kind of late. I'm forgetting words. <laughs> whatever whatever the fuck that neck thing is called. On his, and, he, and he had, like, a real one. You know, I had presumed it was just, like, well-fashioned foam or, like, you know, a good piece of plastic. But, like, no, it was a piece of wood. He was wearing that shit all day. And I can only presume, and I believe they mentioned this, that the nails in the back of it were indeed real nails in the back of it. Um, I'm not sure how good of an idea that was, but I guess I give him some credit, maybe a little. Um, but my, my second place vote uh, was for the Granny Smith, which I just thought was generally well done and... Uh, you know, actually bringing the walker up there and maneuvering it through the crowd. Um, I, I'm willing to give credit for that. Um, one thing that I don't think any of the contestants were uh, expecting was that, you know, they would be asked by the MC guy to, you know, either like a question or, again, obvious pony quote or obvious setup or something, and that they would have to do like a little performance. I think this ran the whole gauntlet. Some people got it. Um, Anyone who was dressed as Big Mac really got out of this because you need to say one thing. Um, some of the other people uh, took this as an opportunity. This is one of the things that I hate about this fandom, and it, and it comes up a lot and it came up a lot here, to show us just how awesome they are and how much they know the show and how much fun and free willing they are. And it's like, no, shut up. I hate you. A, a few of the DJ Pwn3 people did this and i think like one was good but the rest were awful one guy started beatboxing and i wanted to kill everyone in the building um it was just so goddamn awful and a few other people like uh and, and then on the other end you know and I, and I blame these people a lot less a few people just didn't know what to say like yeah i'm, I'm twilight 
hi, I'd like books. Um, 